So um, I've just come across uh, an article online about a Scottish athlete, young man called Daniel Wallace, who has just won the men's swimming. I don't know the exact name of the event, but he's just won men's swimming at the Glasgow Commonwealth Games. Um, and some cameras picked up. Uh, it wasn't very clear in the audio I watched, but you could see it in his um, in by lip reading. He shouted out for freedom, for freedom. Now there's some um, irony with his name being Wallace, and obviously William Wallace, Scotland, etc., etc. But this uh, got me thinking um, about how. Yes, people in this referendum debate are distorting the situation to the level of sheer absurdity. The first thing, I take nothing away from this young man. He's, uh, he's made an achievement. Hats off to him. Well done. But there are several things to point out. Firstly, the report, according to, I believe it's a Scottish um, daily record, points out that he is based in Florida. So... Um, this this uh, guy lives in Florida, and he's talking about Scottish uh, independence. That's fine. Uh, well, his position is clearly of Scottish independence. That's fine. I have no problem with where he lives. I just think it's a bit rich for him to be sort of modelling himself after William Wallace when he lives... Uh, if he wants to come and fight for the poor, oppressed people of Scotland, then why is he not living in Scotland? Um, and that's uh, another thing I want to go on to. So what I'm saying there is I respect his achievement. I have no respect for his attitude there. Um, and incidentally, he's not behaving in a professional manner. I, I know he's a young man, he's only 21, but it's not professional. It's politicising um, the Games. And the Commonwealth Games, just like the Olympics, athletes are not allowed to do that. So I don't know if there's going to be some implications there, but... That was clearly a reference to the referendum, clearly. That is in contrast to the opening ceremony where I'm pleased to see the other home nations were cheered in Glasgow. Um, so, unfortunately, these undercurrents of Scottish nationalism are coming out. Um, by all means, Scottish people should be proud that um, Glasgow's hosting it, but it's unfortunate that there are... And, of course, all the uh, yes people were thought this was wonderful, but... Really, what he done there was just politicised uh, an international sporting event. Um, but I actually want to tackle that a little bit. Not in detail, not in one video, but I want to talk about it a little bit. I find it rather nauseating when Scottish nationalists whinge about how terrible it all is. How god-awful the United Kingdom is. And how they've been kept in slavery for hundreds of years. Now, the way Scottish nationalists talk, you would honestly think that they're living under a brutal dictatorship in Westminster that doesn't let them have an opinion, that doesn't let them join political parties, that doesn't let them peacefully protest. There's only one problem. They can have their opinions, they can join a political party, they can peacefully protest. They have a right to hate the United Kingdom. They have a right to say that they hate the United Kingdom. Now, and what other authoritarian regime, which is what they're making out the United Kingdom out to be, would you, would you have that situation? I actually think it is ironic that in this Commonwealth Games there are countries who would execute people simply for being gay. That is a real infringement of civil liberties. The United Kingdom, which let's be clear here, is not England controlling Scotland. It is England, Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales together as a union of four na nations. So this notion that England is enslaving the Scots, I think it's actually bordering on pure racism because it's vilifying the English as being these um, evil colonialists who are keeping the Scots down. Well, there's some problems with that argument. Firstly, um, some of the most staunch British imperialists in the days of empire were from Scotland. Um... Some of our most recent Prime Ministers have been from Scotland, which is the highest political office in the United Kingdom. Tony Blair and Gordon Brown were both born in Scotland. So clearly this is a system that is so repressive of the Scots 
that it enables men born in Scotland to assume its highest political office. Clearly that doesn't add up. And Blair and Bryan aren't the only Prime Ministers from Scotland. I have, I believe there's seven directly born in Scotland and several others, including William Gladstone, of Scots background. So this claim about being subservient to the English, it's, if anything, you could argue it's the other way around with the West Lothian question. The fact that people in Scotland have two representatives. In fact, three. They've got a member of the European Parliament, they've got a member of the Scottish Parliament, and they've got the their MP that goes to Westminster. English voters have an MEP and an MP. So actually, Scots have more representation. Now, there's many people in England would argue that's unfair. And I would say it's one area the Union probably needs to improve. But as a starting point, to say that the Union is based on repression of the Scots is just... It's ridiculously... It's... It really bugs me because it is so... I actually think what it does is it trivialises genuine suffering in the world. I mean, the way Scottish nationals talk about this, you would think that they're trying to appeal to the UN or to Amnesty International or something about the way the evil English are treating them. And I believe it's based on racism. I believe it's based on anti-English racism because it's based on the notion that the English are repressing the Scottish. And it's just, it's just plain wrong. I'm the first to admit that Scotland has some serious social problems. And I am the first to admit, as someone who believes in the UK, that the UK is not perfect. There are many questions to be answered. There are things to improve. But I am convinced that breaking this country apart, becoming the first Western country to voluntarily break itself apart, is just crazy. And I hate the idea of it, quite frankly. I support self-determination. I support the Scottish people's right to decide themselves. But the sort of uh, things that they're coming out with, I shouldn't say everyone. I should be open-minded enough to recognise that not everyone voting yes is a hardcore nationalist who hates the English. I know that. Okay? I know there's yes people who have English friends and so on. But nevertheless, it is indisputable that wherever the outcome of this referendum, there's going to be bitterness and there's going to be division in Scotland. Already... Cyber nationalists are giving the impression that they will marginalise no voters as being traitors to Scotland. Don't take my word for it. Check out some of the rhetoric that they've been putting online. Check out statements like, fuck off, back to England, you Tory bastards. In other words, insinuating that all English people must be Tories, which is obviously wrong, because there's many people in Northern England who hate the Tories. This is not about... Pl- uh, party politics, this goes much beyond that. And it is getting critical because I believe we're now less than 100 days away. Less than 100 days away until this country could potentially break up. So for nationals to spin this absolutely baseless propaganda about the English colonising Scotland, Scotland is already free. Scotland is already free. It's not dominated by England. And it's just an absolutely shameful lie that nationals are putting out there. There is actually, like I said, there's actually more representation for Scottish people than there is for English people. And let's be clear about the United Kingdom. It's not a case of England controlling Scotland. It's a case of Scotland and England in a mutual union. Yes, there's things that can improve about the union. But those things that can improve, for example, the West Slovene question are matched, are outweighed in fact, by the many, many benefits of the union. 90% of Scottish business leaders think it will be bad for business, which means it's going to damage the Scottish economy. They will have to automatically reapply for the European Union. In other words, they're not going to just get in, as Alex Salmon previously said they would. They would have to apply, like any country that wants to join for the first time. There will be the cost of opening embassies around the world. Where's that money going to come from? There's far too many grey areas when it comes to Scottish independence. And I believe it's based on this sort of sentimental, romantic notion. Which is, I can understand that. Okay, if I was Scottish, I would have romantic ideals as well. 
But those sort of romantic notions and the myths of Bannockburn and this sort of thing don't really compensate for the reality of what this will mean and the consequences. And for the record, unionists can be just as sentimental about the United Kingdom. I love the United Kingdom. And I am proud of this country. I am proud that England and Scotland has been united for 300 plus years. I'm proud of the fact that we have achieved massive things as a United Kingdom. And I just cannot understand the mentality of some Scottish nationalists that they hate this country so much that they would go out of the way to spread these lies about being trampled by the English. Like I said, I really do believe it's based on racism because it's trying to stir up fear against the other. And it's a them and us mentality. You know, the Better Together campaign has been accused of negativity, but it's not the Better Together campaign that is all about division. The Better Together campaign is about being better together. And some nationalists say they, the Better Together campaign hates Scotland. Uh, one problem with that, its chairman, Alistair Darling, is Scottish. Most of its supporters probably are Scottish. Many of its supporters are English, yeah and Welsh and Northern Irish and part of the Scottish diaspora abroad because all those people recognise that there's just too many grey areas with independence Scotland is already free so this notion about gaining freedom freedom from what? <laughs> I mean you, the way they talk about it you would think that they're living in North Korea or Uzbekistan it's ridiculous Look at China. Now Xinjiang and Tibet are autonomous regions that have um, long had issues with uh, whether or not to be independent. The Chinese Communist Party's approach to that is brute force. Compare that to the United Kingdom where Scottish people can have a referendum. Clearly the UK is such a totalitarian barbaric state that it is allowing Scottish people to have a referendum. Surely if this was all about freedom, then David Cameron would be sending in soldiers to gun down these, uh, these pesky dissidents in Edinburgh. It's nothing like that at all. And it's based on absolute lies. Long live the United Kingdom.